Welcome again to uh, the A. Richard Newton Distinguished Innovator Lecture Series. I'm supposed to actually give you like the very first talk, like on the first week, but we've had like two speakers already. So <clears throat> my ability to introduce what the class to you is not going to be as good since you've already had two of the classes. But I do want to tell you a couple things as if it was kind of day one um, and you know, kind of formally introduce uh, what we're doing with the class and, and why we have the class, things along those lines. And then most importantly, <clears throat> today's the day when we uh, kick off the uh, project part of that. And you should all have um, a, a card with, a, um, with some set of words on it. Um, if there's anyone that doesn't have one of those, what do they do if they don't have one? So we'll get you a card if you don't have one. Uh, but basic, I'm assuming almost everybody here has their card, right? All right. So uh, let me get started. First of all, um, this, uh, this course is uh, quite often one of the first classes that people take from the center, from the Satarja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. And there's a, lot, there, there's a whole range of things that people come to the center for. Um, uh, there's a whole set of undergraduate classes. Uh, there is a sequence of classes that is for PhD students. Uh, we have things that are actually also for people that are not even on the campus. I just can't want you to be aware of that. Um, there is a, a program that we do with executives. <clears throat> uh, these are people at Google, Yahoo, Network Appliances, Cisco, Samsung, all of the kind of like Silicon Valley companies. They take a course from us literally in Silicon Valley. Um, we have global partners. There's many universities around the world that send people. Sometimes you see people from different places in the classes here and, um, and, and you know, participating in different ways, visiting scholars, things like that. And just in general, there's a lot of people that come uh, into like the collection of all these activities. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's kind of two buckets of things that we do with the center. Uh, one is our you know, there's what we generally refer to as our method, uh, Berkeley method of entrepreneurship. And um, if you've already taken one of the classes, you got kind of some of the idea about it. If you haven't taken a class um, uh, from the center, uh, then what you'll find is that um, the topic of, the, you know, that a lot of the content, not all of the content, but some of the content is really around mindset and behavior, kind of like how you see the world, how you're pre-programmed to see the world, how you behave, and whether you behave in ways that let you be innovative, that let you be entrepreneurial, or ways that take you away from, from those types of activities. The other thing <clears throat> uh, that happens in the center is it's where people who don't normally meet with each other uh, get a chance to bump in or collide or mix, basically team formation. The first teams form um, in, in this process of getting people together. So we got these two activities that go on, uh, Berkeley Method and uh, Innovation Collider. Um, and just a couple words on how we teach this topic. Uh, our classes are not like other classes that, that you take um, in the following sense that teaching these topics is, is different than the way that you learn other materials. So we don't really teach it like this. I think you'll, you'll agree that's not how, if you, those of you who have taken a class, you realize that's really not what we're doing in the classes. Um, we don't use um, prescriptive methods. We don't say, here's the formula for how to start your venture. Here's the, here's the recipe for the steps that you're going to take uh, to do this innovative thing. Uh, the reason why we don't do that is because what you're trying to do is new. There's not, a, there's not a recipe already for it. And in fact, even the time, the, the circumstances that you're, you know, the time period and the circumstances, they're also new. So there's not, uh, even if something worked before, it doesn't mean that it works now. So we have to have some other way that we can teach these behaviors and teach the way that you become entrepreneurial and the way that you become innovative. And um, we also don't test for it this way, clearly. We don't make you read a bunch of stuff and tell us what's in it. We have to have some other way to, 
to get you to understand what are those behaviors and what are the ways that people be, are entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that we talk a lot about is inductive learning, which just means instead of finding the answer in a book, can you find it from your environment? And, um, and you have to kind of go back to how you learn things when you were a kid. And it's basically you see something happen, and you say, why did that thing happen? You know, you make your own hypothesis. Uh, this is probably because of that. There's some pattern that you observe, and, and you try to figure out the why. And then you see it a couple times over. You develop your patterns. You, nobody told you how to do so many things you know, as, as you're growing up. You just learned it right from the environment. In school, we tend to not teach that way normally. And the reason we don't normally teach that way, we don't teach that way normally, is that it just takes a long time to learn from the environment. If we said, you know, just learn physics, but learn it completely on your own. Here's an apple, go outside, drop it off a tree for a while until you get Newton's laws, and then kind of go from there. It'll just take you a really long time to come to the same state. But there's not another way to learn things that are just at the edge of what's going on. You still have to go back to what's the environment, what's actually the situation. There's not a pre-programmed you know, book or set of instructions to, to just shortcut you to the answer. So we try to get this done. We, we try to get you to think in these ways. <clears throat> and if you take um, not so much this course, but other courses of the center, this is a very common pattern that we have across our courses, which is that you're, you're actually trying to work on your venture and while you're doing it, it's kind of a journey that you're on. Your whole team is on this journey. And while you're trying to do it, you're saying, is, you know, what, what did I know before? What did I try to do? Is this going in the direction that I want it to go in? Uh, am I happy with this direction? What could I try next? You basically iteratively learn from all the things that you do. You look back, you reflect, and, and you find your way, right? Th that's the learning process. Um, quite often, there is a case study or a lecture, uh, an experiential lecture. Um, you apply it to a project, and y y you know you do a self-reflection. Like, did did that? You know, did that? So far, what have I learned? You know, like, what have I learned up till now? What have I tried up till now? What could work better? That's really the learning method that that we try to to use in the in the rest of the courses of the center. <clears throat> um, if you haven't been to the uh, Satarja Center website, scet.berkeley.edu, that's where you would find all of the courses. Um, this is, I'm not even sure this is an updated list, but just an example of, you know, there's many other courses. Uh, um, and I, I can see, you know, that many of you have taken, you know, uh, other of these courses. But for those of you that this is the first time that you're in a class of the Satarja Center, you know, just be aware, there, there are other courses. There, there's many other courses. OK. Um, the other thing that we like to do is we like to have challenges and topics um, in areas where uh, we think things are about to change in the world, but nobody knows exactly how they're going to change. Like, it's just at the edge of things that are changing. So again, there's not books on it. Um, we're, we're really, like, if you could be any more applied you would just be there. You, you'd just be in that industry situation. So um, kind of on the other end of the deep theoretical, just you know, on the very applied side, there's a whole bunch of topics here. Um, every year, we publish a list on what we think is investable right now. And you'll see in the project that we're going to kick off here pretty soon that um, we'll pick a couple of these topics also to kind of bring into the project that you're going to do. Um, uh, if you've experienced some of our um, collider projects or, um, or challenge labs, you might recognize some of the topics. You know, they get brought into a class format. So um, whether it's healthcare and data analytics and electronic medical records or blockchain or you know, any number of other topics, we're, we're, we're always bringing the topics of the watch list in as challenges into the classes that we're offering. This semester, um, it's a little, I mean, I'm not saying any of this to sign up for a class right now, um, but just for example, uh, this semester we're doing one on plant-based um, fish uh, as an emerging area, as in plant-based meat. 
and uh, the other one is an IP collider, intellectual property that comes out of University of California. OK. Um, uh, this is another class. Um, uh, uh, this is also, uh, don't try to take it this semester, um, but in future, um, you know, we'll be scaling this class. Um, it's another kind of current, it's a very current topic type of class. It's a data class. Um, OK, so now that's all background on the center. And you know the other things that are that this the, the other things that are part of the center, and this class is you know one of those things. So I'm going to tell you something about the purpose of this class, um, and I'm going to summarize it kind of like this, which is, um, you know, you meet a lot of people all the time, right? I mean, just everywhere you go, whatever at the mall in your classes, a different, you meet people all the time, but. Um, it's been my experience that meeting people who are entrepreneurs is just a little different. Okay, like there's something about entrepreneurs they they seem to be you know unique in in some way. And I think if you never really get a chance to meet entrepreneurs, um, you don't really understand what's kind of what's in them. Uh, you don't see. Um, their attitudes to things, uh, kind of like how open they are about um, the, the things that they want to do, or kind of uh, there's a certain amount of courage in, uh, when, when they speak. Um, there, there's a whole bunch of other behaviors that entrepreneurs have. And it's kind of hard to, um, it, certainly, it's not even of any real value to describe them. I think it's just so much easier to have a sequence of, one entrepreneurial person after another one, and you know, and you just see them. And one of the goals here is okay. There's a couple of goals. One goal is that there are behaviors, and that you might notice some of the behaviors that entrepreneurs have, and um, and there's a certain osmosis that happens just by listening to them. You start to develop a little bit of that, on, that set of entrepreneurial behaviors yourself if you are exposed to, to people like this. The second thing that happens is there's a pretty wide range of types of people who are entrepreneurial. It's not like they're all the same. And you might say, you know what? I'm not at all like this person, but I'm a little bit like that person. And, and there's a way to kind of connect yourself and um, and see a path for how you can be entrepreneurial, whether you want to start a company or you don't. But to have entrepreneurial characteristics, um, y you, can, you can see versions that can, that can resonate with you. Um, I mean, I know people who are really very shy people. I mean, ultimately, they're shy. And you know, when you talk to them, you'd never think that they would be entrepreneurial. And they start huge companies. And like it, it's like there. It's not that like you, you have to be like exactly one type of person, but there are characteristics, and you put them together the right way, and and they're entrepreneurial. I mean, certainly not everyone who's shy starts a company, um, and there's plenty of people who are um, not shy at all, and they start companies too. <clears throat> I'm just saying you don't really get locked out by you know one you know one particular characteristic. Um, but you have to you, you have to kind of see a pattern uh, of of a few so that you can figure out you know who you connect with the most. Um, I, I've seen a lot of speakers here uh, over time. I, I've I've I started this center and I started this series. You know what's now about ten years ago, and so I've seen I've seen it like twenty times over. Like, like I, I've seen it many many times, and you know I'll see uh, a person who. Um, who will say, uh, yeah, I was sitting where you're sitting like 10 years ago and, or you know, some number of years ago. And they'll say, I had like this career choice. I could have done this thing or that thing. And um, given the information that I had in school, uh, they seem like equally good choices to me. And it's only when I got out of school I found out that I was so lucky that I didn't choose cho choice B, and that I actually chose choice A, because choice B had about seven job openings in the whole world. There's like almost nothing there. And choice B was this huge emerging industry, and there was like so much to do. And 
Um, and sometimes you just don't, it, like at this point is that you don't always know what all these opportunities are. And you can pick up pieces just by seeing, um, you know, by seeing the, the, the paths and the stories uh, and the context that, that many of these speakers will bring. So for a whole range of reasons, I, I think it's, it's a very healthy and very helpful to see the sequence of speakers that, that you're going to see. Um, so anyway, I'll just bring it back to this. Uh, we believe there's a whole bunch of values that entrepreneurial people have. I'm not going to go through this in any detail, but you know, uh, a big one is your ability to trust people quickly for, <clears throat> for various reasons. Uh, diversity, being able to work with people that you don't normal, don't, that are different than you, basically. Um, that that is a that's a really important uh, entrepreneurial characteristic. The the simple reason for that is. Um, People who are just like you have no information to trade with, with you. They know what you know. It's only people who are different than you have information that you don't have. But those are the people who you have the greatest social barriers to. So you like to spend all your time with the people who will give you the least information that can be helpful to you. You have to kind of break out of your, your social uh, barriers and your social norms to even talk to the people who can be most helpful. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of these behaviors. It's not my goal here to like list them or, or to tell them to you, but I want you to see various behaviors in other people as they're speaking. And that, that's really part of the goal of, of what we're doing with the series. So uh, I'm closing up on this part, and really what we're going to do now is kick off the project part. Um, you want to come up and uh, uh, help us with, with that? By the way, if you have a question, I'm happy. <laughs> I am willing to entertain a question. <laughs> yeah, definitely ask some questions. Not sure there's a lot to ask questions on. It's really an introduction, but. You have one. Where, oh, oh, yeah. Uh huh. So we're interested in some of the subjects that this Dark Descender is looking at. How do we get involved? Um, I mean, our, so the question is how do you get involved because there's so many things going on? Um, the, the really, we, like, we don't have kind of like a help desk kind of thing. Um, uh, it, it's uh, the, the best way is just take one of the classes. I mean, and you're taking a class now, but the, you know, there's all kinds of classes that have projects, and you just never know where those are going to go. I, I know of people who, students who will take you know, classes in a sequence. They'll do one, and then they'll, <clears throat> they'll do another class, and they'll, they'll meet some other people. <clears throat> there's a lot to meeting people while you're working on one of these topics. Does that answer your question? Is there another, is there an answer you were hoping for? OK, all right. I saw somebody's hand. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, I sort of noticed that there, most of the pro classes, that the courses that the center offers for the CEP are upper division courses that require junior or senior standing. Is it possible for the center to open up more under uh, lower division classes to help? Yeah, it, it's, a <clears throat> it's a really good point. Um, we're trying to do that, actually. So we have uh, some fraction of this class, of course, which is um, lower division. and. Um, the issue is <clears throat> the earlier that people can take classes like this, the longer they have to experiment. <clears throat> and you know, if you take it just before you graduate, then you're so busy <clears throat> thinking about interviewing and what you're going to do next that you don't really have your full mental bandwidth around like, oh, what if I played with this a little bit longer? So we actually think it's a good idea if we could you know, move the whole process backwards. And, and we're trying to get there. All right, then. I think, uh, yeah. how does the project work? Yeah. <laughs> so just one comment on like uh, entrepreneurship classes through the Starjadai Center. Um, I think like the startup boot camp class, like there's a, it's a week before the school year starts. And then there's another week they do it as well, right? Uh, yeah, we, d we do it in the spring and in the fall. Yeah, the so it's before. like a one week, two unit class. And like, that's from eight to five for one week. Um, and you get like, really close connections with people that are in the Satarja Center. And then also, like, we, they bring in a lot of guest speakers. And you work on a fun project. So I think that is like a really good starting place, especially like for undergrads. Um, and so yeah, uh, I will go into the, uh, the paper here, or the project. So like the main point of this project, um, 
is like before we didn't have this project like a year ago and like students weren't able to kind of like keep in contact with one another or like actually like talk to the person next to you and so this is like really why uh, we started this project. Kind of along the philosophy of forming teams and meeting people, right? You could go through the whole class and never get to know other people. Exactly. It, I think it, it's really good for that. So when you are writing this final paper, like try to make it an effort to go and like meet someone in person rather than like doing a Google Doc online. I think that kind of defeats the purpose of this like group uh, group project. Um, so yeah, I think Victoria went over this all last week. So. Uh, that's the info for it. Uh, you already have hopefully picked a card outside. If you haven't, um, you can go out there when we go like split up into our groups. Um, yeah, so we'll start with this. Um, the yellow slash resilience people will come up here on the stage. Um, the blue let, group. Let me just make sure they know what they're going to be doing with it. Yeah. Is yeah. that on the next slide or did we skip over that? So they, it's right here. Okay. Um, Basic, uh, may, maybe it's to follow. Um, so uh, here, go one slide ahead, because I know you're about to start moving around, and then you won't be able to see what's on the slide after this. this let, me, let me just see one more slide. OK, I don't know where it is. But basically, um, if you remember, what you're going to do is you're going to get into a group of two to four people with, that have the same color card. And uh, the card is a hypothesis. Something, you know, it's a statement. It, you know, something that you can say is true or not true. And as a group, you'll watch a whole bunch of speakers, you'll make some connections between what you saw and what is this statement, and you'll write a two page paper collectively. But the byproduct of that is that you will have talked with other people and you'll have this kind of discourse about either a behavioral, behavior mindset topic or on a technology. Uh, change topic. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so awesome. So now, like, you guys can read this, and then once you like form your per your group of two to four people, um, I'll have a link up here that you can kind of fill out all the information on, and then I'll post it so you guys can like stay in contact um, and whatnot. Uh, yeah, we'll take questions before. Yeah. So the purple one. If you got the purple one, that means like throughout the course of the semester, as you start to like learn these things in entrepreneurship and you find like a theme among, among entrepreneurs, that's what that purple, uh, the purple one is for. I, I, I think the point is they don't have a place to meet. Oh, uh, the, uh, got it. The, that's pretty funny. Let's uh, see. So not only do you have a topic, you yeah, also you don't also know, where, don't to know where to go. Um, uh, I'd say, I would say um, if you have a purple one, come outside this door out over here. To the like the left of the stage. I we have to keep like the groups. Uh, yeah. So there's only the cards there. So yeah, everyone like get up and then go to your, find your groups. <laughs> 